Welcome back, one and all, to another holiday edition of Weekly Wordplay. I'm Stephanie with Apex Languages. 2020 has been a heck of a year for everyone. During these hard times, many rely on their families more than ever for comfort and support. So what do you do then when on the most family-oriented holiday of the year, you're unable to gather and celebrate together? You can complain, you can get angry, you could wrap yourself in denial and accuse the news of making everything up, pretending that things have gone back to normal. Or you can get creative, drop off desserts to friends or family, have Zoom parties online, find new ways to share the things you love with the people that you love. We are so lucky to live in this time of digital conveniences. When they were going through the same thing a hundred years ago, they didn't have half as many options as we do now. And that brings me to the most important thing of all. No matter how you celebrate Thanksgiving this year, don't forget to be thankful or grateful. No matter how bad things are, how tight money is, how much you miss your loved ones, how stressed you are about getting sick or the state of our country, let it go. And if only for 24 hours, think only about the good things. If you don't have money for a big Thanksgiving meal, be grateful that there are kind, generous people out there offering turkeys for free. If your family can't come to you, be grateful that you can call or even video chat with them, again, for free. It used to be that when you emigrated to a new country, you were saying goodbye to everyone back home forever. But today, goodbye is not really goodbye. And instead of worrying about the future, take a moment to say thanks that you've made it this far. Let the future worry about itself for a minute. I say the same thing to my students every year. Don't stress so much about how bad your English is. Instead, take a moment and think back to when you started, when you knew absolutely nothing. If you can understand what I'm saying right now, even if it's not 100%, even if it's only 60, 70%, you have a lot to be proud of. Remember that every day. That being said, I should probably get back to actually teaching you some more English. In today's video, we're going to look at a couple different ways to say thank you, starting with, as you've already seen, grateful. Repeat it with me. Grateful, grateful, grateful. As with all words ending in full, grateful is an adjective, and it comes from Latin gratus, meaning pleasing, the same place the Spanish get gracias from. Notice the spelling, how it's different from our other adjective great, G-R-E-A-T, meaning wonderful or big. That's because these two homophones are unrelated. Great comes from German. Grateful is related to the English noun gratitude. Gratitude means thankfulness, whereas grateful is just thankful, being full of thanks. I'm very grateful for all your help. A synonym of grateful is appreciative. Repeat that one with me. Appreciative, appreciative, appreciative. Even easier to say and spell and significantly more common is the appreciate, the verb. This doesn't mean to thank so much as to value. When you say you appreciate something, you mean that it is valuable to you. Both words come from Latin as well, from the combination of ad and pretium, meaning to set a price or again, a value. Here are some sample sentences so you can see those different parts of speech at work. I'm very appreciative of all your help. 
Notice how you use the preposition for with gratitude, but of with appreciative. And I really appreciate all your help. You can use really with adjectives as well as verbs. So I'm really appreciative, but not very. I very appreciate something just doesn't work. I've got plenty more gratitude to share. So let me give you a list of different ways to simply say thank you. Of course, the first one that comes to mind is simply thanks. You can also say thanks a lot or thanks a bunch or thanks a ton. A ton is 2,000 pounds. That's a whole lot of thanks. For the rest of this list, I'm going to try to go in order from the more formal to less. One of the most professional sounding of all being it was very considerate of you to help me with that. Or just, that was very considerate of you, period. Considerate means that you think about other people's feelings. Next, I am in your debt, or I am indebted to you for all your hard work. The latter especially may sound a little old fashioned, but it's a nice sentiment. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You did something nice for me, so now, one of these days, I want to do something nice for you. Our next phrase is more straightforward. I cannot thank you enough. Use for if you want to be more specific. I cannot thank you enough for your kind words. Obliged is not a word you hear very often, unless you're in Portugal or Brazil, but it is similar in meaning to indebted. I legally owe you a favor. Cowboys used to say simply, much obliged, when they needed to thank someone. And you can too, although it's more formal if you say the whole thing. That meant a lot to me. What you did meant a lot to me. Or your present meant a lot to me, etc. The key here is you need a noun in front. And then there's, that was very kind of you. Again, replace that with some sort of noun or noun phrase if you want to be more specific. No, we're not done yet. Now we're dealing with phrases that, although still usable in a professional setting, may not be ideal for a cover letter or other super formal message. If someone does something so nice that you want to cry, you can say that you are overwhelmed. That is, your emotions are threatened to overwhelm or overpower and take control of everything else. Saying that you're at a loss for words carries the same idea, although being at a loss can also be used by someone who is so angry that they can't speak. It can be either good or bad. When your friends surprise you with an expensive gift, it's polite to exclaim, you shouldn't have, short for you shouldn't have spent all that money, or something like that. Just make sure that your tone sounds happy, or they may think you're serious and take the present back, although it's unlikely. You shouldn't have. That sounds not so great, right, compared to, oh, you shouldn't have. Just be a little careful with that tone. Next, it never hurts to add, you're the best, or I owe you one. That goes back to indebted. If you're at a bar, you can say, have a drink on me, which means you're paying, so the debt's paid off, problem solved. Awesome, or something like that, of course, conveys the idea that you're happy and therefore thankful. And well, don't worry here, you're the bomb is not a threat. It's a good thing, just like how in some parts of the country being wicked is also complimentary. Finally, you rock. That means that you are as cool as rock and roll, baby. Now, as always, it's time to put all these phrases into practice. You can post a sentence using some of the words below in the comments or in an email to me, but I think it would be even nicer if you used them writing some real thank you letters to some important people in your life. That being said, 
still feel free to add any other words of gratitude you can think of down below. Much obliged. Of course, I cannot thank you guys enough for watching every week. You're the bomb. I might take the next week or two off, but I'll be back before you know it with more linguistic goodness. Until then, make the most of this wonderful holiday and don't let the pandemic or Black Friday ruin it. Have an extra slice of pie for me and stay happy, healthy, and safe, my friends.